So I'm going to share my screen with you. This is the main screen. This is my desktop. In order to open Microsoft Word, the easy way for me, you don't see the icon of Microsoft Word here or on the bottom. It's on the start menu. You click and then you type Word. Remember, you don't need to type Microsoft. The only thing you need to type in here is Word and you will see the icon of Microsoft Word in here. So you press the left click on the mouse and you open Microsoft Word. Uh, by the way, I send you a link uh, if you want to download Microsoft Word for one month free. I hope you did it. If not, you can uh, use WordPad for that one. So this is the main screen of Microsoft Word. At the top, if you remember, we used to call this one menus years, years ago. Now Microsoft is calling this one tabs. This is the name of this one. So we have the file tab when we can find new, open, save, save as, print, share, export. In order to go back to the main screen, there is an arrow pointing to the left, and now you are in the home tab. Every time you move through the tabs, this option is going to be different. This is the ribbon, okay? If I go to the insert, this is the ribbon for the insert tab from here to here. We have design. This design tab is something new in Microsoft Word 2013, 16, and 19. It doesn't exist in 2010 in the old versions. We have the layout. Now they call layout, they used to call page layout. We have the references. We have the mailing, review, view. This is the last tab. Most of the time, the 90%, this is the last tab. We can add some extra tabs if you want to. We're going to use home today. Tomorrow, we're going to use insert. And the third class, in the fourth class, we're going to use mailings. So today, we're going to use the home tab. I'm going to open the assignment for yesterday, this one. And I'm going to show you how to highlight the text. Remember that we used to call highlight the text? Now they call select the text. Highlight is select the text. They don't call highlight anymore. What means highlight or select is to put the mouse pointer at the beginning of the line. Press and hold the left click on the mouse, hold the left click on the mouse, and drag it. In order to change the format, meaning the font, the font size, make it bold, italic, underline, on the alignment, we need to select the text. Teacher, what is select highlight the text? For those who learned Microsoft Word years, years ago, we used to call highlight the text. Microsoft now said you need to say select the text. So if you put the mouse at the beginning, you need to press and hold the left click on the mouse, drag it, and go to the right. I can start from the end and go to the left. If I want to select one word, I need to put the mouse, point, the mouse pointer on the word I want to select and double click. One, two. I'm going to select systems. I put the mouse pointer in the middle of systems and I press the click on the mouse twice. One, two. Okay. By the way, on the PowerPoint I sent to you, we're going to use control. We're going to use the shift, the navigation keys, the home key, and the end key on your keyboard. Okay, guys? Control, shift, navigation keys, home, and end. Because we're going to learn how to move the mouse or move the cursor. Okay? If you want to select one line, 
you can move the mouse pointer a little bit to the left. Do you see the shape of my mouse pointer look like an arrow? When the mouse pointer looks like an arrow, like here, you press the left click on the mouse, you select one single line. Remember, I'm using the left click on the mouse. If you want to select these two lines, I can move here, select, press and hold the left click on the mouse and drag it down. Okay. Also, if you want to select one paragraph, you can press the left click on the mouse three times in any part of the paragraph. One, two, three. Left click on the mouse three times. One, two, three. Okay. I'm going to go back to this one. Any questions that you have? Uh, yes, I'm not able to open for some reason when I'm going to Microsoft um, Word, I'm usually able to open it when I go to my Word app, but it's just coming up as an app now. It's not coming up as it usually does. Is that a reason or? Uh, you open it from your laptop or from your tablet or for your cell phones? Laptop. Laptop. Okay. Uh, if for any reason Microsoft Word is not working for you, if you have a Windows instead of a uh, Mac computer, open yes. this program, Wordpack. And you can use the same steps I'm explaining. Wordpad is the word processor that comes with Windows. It's free. It's a word processor. I, I have um I have Microsoft 365, but I'm using WordPad now. So okay. 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 So any question about how to select the text using the mouse? Yes. Okay. So I'm using the mouse to select. I can press the left click on the mouse, drag it, and I'm selecting line by one. Okay. Now we are going to kill the mouse, okay? For those who were my students, you know what I mean when I say kill the mouse. You're gonna use the shift key, okay? How many shift keys do we have? We have two, one on the left side on the space bar and one on the right side. And also we're going to use the navigation keys in order to select without the mouse. Got it guys? We're going to use shift and the navigation keys and also we're going to use the shift key, home, shift and, and. My cursor on my blinking line is at the beginning of this line. If I press the end key here, the cursor is going to move to the end of the line in here. If I press the home key, the blinking line of the cursor is going to move at the beginning of the line. If you want to select the text without the mouse, if you press Shift and at the same time, I'm going to select the line. You are at the end of the line in here. You need to press Shift and Home in order to select the line. So far, so good. If you want to continue selecting lines without the mouse, you can press Shift, Shift, and the arrow down. Shift, I'm pressing arrow down, and then I can continue. So, in order to select text in Microsoft Word, the key that we need to press 
is the shape. And I have a lot of students say, teacher, but we have the mouse. Yeah, but the little guy sometimes not going to work. And you need to provide a report or finish a document and the mouse is not working and then you're going to wait for the IT guy to replace the mouse and the IT guy is going to take three hours. Well, you're going to be in trouble. So we need to know that in order to select text, we can use the ship key, the navigation keys for the home and the end. So, so far, so good. I'm going to put if you have any question in here. Uh, yes, I do. Um, I don't see on my I'm I'm working on my laptop. I don't see these two key, keys, which is home. Hmm? Well, is the pen on the laptop that you have? Um, yes. Sometimes those keys can be on the lower right corner on your laptop, but you need to press the function key in order to activate the home and the end. So. Okay, I can't, I don't see it here, but then. You don't see it? Okay. Well, it depends on the, of the keyword that you have, but most of the time for some laptop that is too small, they put what is the K, L, semicolon. Also, you can see the numbers, and sometimes you can see the home on the end key. But you need to press the function key. Okay, I saw the home. Yeah, I saw the home here. Yeah, it's on the top. Okay. Yes, and you can see Elizabeth. She said the home key is about the calculator. You have one, but maybe your laptop is different. So it depends on the laptop. But most of the time, if you are in, in a PC, in a keyboard with one, 100 key, you're going to see the home and the end above the numeric keypad. Okay? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, home and end. Yeah, they're on the top right. Yeah, correct. Perfect. Perfect. Now, we're back on, on the document. Um, in order to go at the bottom of my document, I have three different ways or more to go using the mouse. I can use the scroll bar on the right side, on the arrow pointing down, and click in the left click on the mouse. I can grab and hold the, this bar. I can use the little wheel on the mouse, or I can use the navigation keys on the keyword. Go down, go up, have you seen the page down, page up? Okay, but let me put this one. If you press Control Home at the same time, you're going to move the cursor at the top of your document, first page. If you press Control and you're going to move the cursor at the end of your document, last page. Let's see, if you have a document with 25 pages, and for any reason your customer wants to see the last page, if, there, if his or her last name, you spell it right, in order to move the cursor, the blinking line, you press Control N, you go to one, you want to go back at the top of your first document and first page, you press Control, that's the shortcuts. I'm here, I press Control N, I go to the bottom of my document, I press Control Home at the top of my document. Just remember, the Control N goes to the last page. Your document has 20, I uh, have 25 pages, 100, 500, it's going to go to the last page. Got it? Okay. Now, since we know how to select the text using the mouse, pressing the left click three times, double click one word, moving the mouse on the left side, 
holding the shift key, navigation arrows. If you press, I'm going to put some shortcuts, Control A, you select all. Okay. By the way, if you receive yesterday the attachment on page number two, I put some of the shortcuts to select the test with the mouse and without the mouse. And Control A is here. This is in, in your handout on page number two. So when we press Control A, we select the whole document. If your document have 25 pages, 100, um, three paragraphs, control A, you select everything. Okay. Any question? Yes, I do have a question. Yes. When you're when I when you're showing us how we should do it, do we have to also actually do it, or we just listen to you? Well, you have two options. Um, you can try and see it's working. I suggest you can do that. And for any reason you are making notes, actually everything you have here in this document I sent you yesterday. So okay. I'm gonna give you. I'm going to give you one minute if you want to practice. If for any reason not working, let me know. And then I can go again through the to the steps. OK, so how do we how do we practice? What do I have to open to practice as you as I listen to you? Oh, this is a good question. When you are here, you can minimize this screen. On the upper right corner. And then you're going to open Microsoft Word and you can open the assignment I sent it to you yesterday. OK, can so I we do have... that in keypad as well? Say it again, sorry. You say open Microsoft Word. If I'm not able to open my Microsoft Word, I have Microsoft Edge. Um, If I'm not able to open my Microsoft Word, can I do that in keypad? As I'm sorry, you... in pad? You can use this one. WordPad. WordPad, OK. So I'm in WordPad. Okay. Now what do I do to go to the yes. document that you sent? OK. Um, you go to WordPad, go and click Open, and look for the attachment I sent it to you yesterday. You said go to WordPad and click what? Here, File, and go. Did you see here in my screen? File. Uh-huh. Go okay. to open. And look for your document that you want to open. This one. If you save in your desktop and your documents and download. Oh, I should have saved the document that you sent yesterday and then it would be on my word pad. Correct. That's correct. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Mm. So uh, going back to my question, I feel that I should just listen to you since you have already given us the uh, material. We can just then see what you are showing us to do because it's very difficult. Uh, from mm -hmm. my perspective, you know, to listen to you and then work it out at the same time. It's like, you know, opening and closing the tab. So I prefer just listening to you and then pay attention that way. It's, it's, okay? it's up to you. Uh, okay. It's up to you. Um, some of my students yesterday, they used the app on their cell phones and they were using the laptop. So you have another option. You can go through the webinar using your cell phone and you can practice in your laptop but you know everybody is going to learn a different way but okay. always i'm going to give you uh, time just to practice what you're learning during the webinar so the main idea right now is how to select the text 
And believe me, you know how to use it. Do it with the mouse. And without the mouse is good. You never know when the mouse is not going to work. So that's why I send you this one, the quick reference. Okay, in here. You see, selecting text without the mouse. And I explained to you so. After the webinar, you can practice and send me some questions. I'm open. Okay. Right. Yep. Uh, you if you have any questions you want me to connect this way, send me an email and I can make an appointment with you and go through the steps. We are more than welcome to help you guys. Hey, Sergio, it's Ray. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you today? I'm fine. Yourself? I'm doing great, sir. So I did open up a Word document, and as you've been going through the exercises, I have been going over to Word and practicing the use of the keys and the, you know, everything you've been telling us. So it has been helpful for me to just kind of go between the programs. So um, I'm learning some new things today. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. Um, Elizabeth, um, your question said, what happened when I press the left click on the mouse three times? When you press the mouse a paragraph three times, it's one, two, three, you select the entire paragraph. One, two, three. Instead of moving the mouse and dragging, doing like this, pressing the left click on the mouse, times anywhere on the paragraph what you said the entire paragraph uh neri pacheco uh, what if i'm using an imac pc what do you mean neri um i'm using my um just a, a mac pc oh. how do i bring up um uh, you know the um Google Docs. Do I have to go into Google and sign in? Well, um, you know, the thing is with Mac is like a Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola. <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> Word is not the same. But if you have a Gmail account, Neri, you can go to your Gmail account and right. then at the, upper, at the upper right corner, go to your Docs and you can. Uh, actually go to uh, Google Docs. What I'm trying okay. to say is open the internet, go to Gmail, then in the upper right corner, you can access your Gmail. Okay, will do. Thank and you. Then in here, you see the menu for the apps, Google Apps, click it, and then you can go to Google Docs in here. Well, my, my computer kind is of low because I'm connecting a lot of participants, but you have a Gmail account, this is for everybody. You can also access this. Then you can select blank document. You can see a document. If I press three times the mouse, I said one paragraph. Everything that you are need to say, you can use in any word processor. I'm going to press shift and I time. I press shift arrow down. I press control A. I select everything. Okay. More questions? Let me check. So, Neri, I hope I'm helping you in this way. Okay. Yes, so, thank uh, you. 
Okay, back to Microsoft Word. So in order to make changes or change the format of the text, we need to select the text. Teacher, what is select? Select is highlight the text. I know we love the word highlight and now Microsoft said no anymore because if you say highlight the text means what color do you want? So Microsoft decide to call select the text. I'm going to use this one, this menu, for the basic format. I'm on the home tab. In order to change what is an ATS, an applicant tracking system, I'm going to select the text. You know different ways. It's up to you which way you can do it. And you see when I select the text, this menu in here is the same and here. So if I want to set this one or this one is the same. In order to change the format, in order to change the font, the font is the style of the text, how the text looks like. So I select the text and this is the font. There is a teeny tiny arrow pointing down. I click on it. It's going to show me the different names. And you can see there is a scroll bar in here when I can move down. I can use the little wheel on the mouse. Oh, the one I love it is the navigation keys. Why? Because every time I move to a different font name, it's going to show me how it's going to look the text. If I want this one elephant, this is the way the font elephant looks like. What happens if I don't like it? Say, oh no, it looks so um, horrible. I don't like it. If I forgot to select the text and then I go to the font, I'm going to put Arial. Do you see nothing happened? Why? Because I forgot to select the text. You're going to hear select the text from me a hundred times. I want you to dream about it. I want you to have nightmares about select the text. Because all the programs are based on select. So I select the text in order to make changes. I'm going to go and change area. Okay. I'm going to go and go Tahoma. By the way, guys, um, if you have a resume and you want to apply for a job, also send me some emails. I can send you some job opportunities. And, but you need to tailor your resume according to the applicant tracking system. The applicant tracking system is a program which is going to scan your resume and determine you are a good candidate for the position. The applicant tracking system kind of picky because they're looking for some specific format in your resume. So when it's about the font of the text, we used to use Times New Roman. No anymore. The fonts that you need to use in your resume can be Arial, can be Tahoma, This one, Verdana. Okay. Mm. And there is another one. Well, there's more, and the other one is Georgia. Georgia looks similar as a uh, Times New Roman. This. One. So again, for your resume, you're applying online. You need to format the font of your document as an area. Can be Georgia. Can be Tahoma. Or Verdena or Verdana. But use only one font. Okay, don't try to make two, three fonts at the same time. Any questions about the font? Let me go back. You can see any question here. Yeah, we are good.
Okay. Now, if I press Control Letter A, I said the whole document. I can make it area. And next to the font is the font size. For a professional document, the font size should be between 10 and 12. Okay. Also, this is the font size that the applicant tracking system looks for. I can be 10, 11, or 12. But yes, for your contact information, you can make it bigger. You can make it 16 or 18. That's okay. But for the rest, should it be 10, 11, or 12 points? The font and the font size are always together in any word processor. This is Microsoft Word. This is WordPad. Do you see Type New Roman 12? I select Control A, Font. I can look for Area. Font size. 10. If I in Google Docs, Font, Area. On size 10. And you can see what you're learning today is not only exclusive for Microsoft Word. You can use it in any word processor. Google Docs, WordPad comes free with any Windows PC, and Microsoft Word. So far, is it good? There you go. Now, below the font and the font size, we have the format of bold, italic, and underline. If I select the text one, two, three, I can make a bold. I can italize the letter. And then I can underline. You see? Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, click it again. I don't like the underline. I don't like italic. I don't like a bold. So bold, italic, and underline. And there is some shortcuts for that one. I'm gonna put it here. You wanna write down. You press control. This bold. Press control. Italic. Press control. Uh, underline. Underline. And I know what you're thinking about. Teacher, we had the mouse, but believe me, you're applying for a job and then you need to take like a test and then you need to format a document. You don't use the mouse and you're using the shortcuts. Believe me, you're going to get the job. Companies are looking for people who have different ways to do the same thing. So Control B, bold. Control I, italic. Control U, underline. And then the whole document just changes. Well, you go like this. I select. Did you see what is an ATS underline? If I press Control U, I <laughs> remove the underline. If I want to remove the bold, I press Control what? B. Mm -hmm. If I want to remove the italic, I. Is it? No, no, no. I like it underline. I hold the control key. I'm holding and press. And I, this is a shortcut to do this one. Wall. Italic. You remember in my in my class, my students always learn different ways to do the same thing. We never know when the mouse is not going to work. Or well, it is better to know different ways. So you want to practice the shortcuts. The shortcuts is Control B, 
Remember to hold the control key. Press B and then release control. OK, you need to hold and press control. I italic. Press and hold control. Press U and then release control. That's the way. It works. It, it works. I did. It works. Oh. <laughs> it works. <laughs> It's glad to hear excited students, you know, thank you. <laughs> yes, it works. I know. <laughs> if you go to WordPad and try to do the same, let's see what happened. Yeah. Control B, Control U, Control I. Oh, works. What happened if I go to Google Docs? Let me see. I select the text, Control B, mm, working, Control U. There you go. Control I. There you go. Do you see, guys? We're learning something that we can apply in a different word processors. So this is not only about Microsoft Word. Your skills can be for Microsoft Word, WordPad, or Google Docs. There you go. Um, by the way, uh, don't use underline in your resume. Um, looks, I don't like it. <laughs> and I know a lot of recruiters, they don't like it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So we have the font and the font size. These, these two are always together. Bold, italic, underline is another type of format. These, tri these three guys, always together. WordPile, Google Docs. Do you see it? That's the beauty. And now we're gonna see the alignment. Remember years, years ago when you want to center something, we used to do this one. This <laughs> one. And then we were like a guessing, like a oh no, no. No, 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 no. So we were guessing, 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 guessing. There you go. Now, for the alignment, you can select and then you can, if you want to select good or not. But I always said select. It's better to remember that one. Center. Right. Center. Left. Center. Right. Center, left. Also, you have it in here and your quick reference. Font, font size, bold, italic, underline, and the alignment. Again, if for some of you did not get the quick reference or they can have, send me an email, please. And I'll go over to you. Happen you press Control L. Well, that be left alignment. Mm. Oh, that's real good for school papers. Okay. Mm. <laughs> if you center something. What you think is going to be Control what? E. It's going to be E. Because C is for copy, so this copy, is going to yeah. be sent. Control C and Control V, yeah. E. Okay. E, yes. Center. Right is going to be Control R. Right. And there is one we don't use a lot, it's justify. Justify is going to align to the left and to the right at the same time. Hmm. Let me show you. This is left, center, right, and this one is justify. Justify is when you have 
like uh, a paragraph like this one let me put something in here i'm gonna copy this one again you see this paragraph in here if you select this one one two three one two three When you select justify, the alignment is going to be on the left side and also on the right side. Take a look in here, please. Did you notice this one? Yep. This is justify. Align left and right. So again, this is control L, left alignment, control E, center, R, right, J, justify. When I do control E and it's highlighted, it takes away my whole top line. The use it first and then you press control E. Highlight it first, then press control E, right? Yeah, let's see. If I set this one, if I press Control E, mm -hmm. center. If the text I select is already in the center, nothing is gonna happen. Do you see left? Gonna move to the left, center. But I need to, I need to select first. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put here just in case somebody has any questions. Okay, Elizabeth uh, says, Sergio, what should we use with resume? Should they be justified or the, to the left? I use justify in my resume. But when you apply online, it doesn't matter. But when I print it out, I justify my paragraphs, Elizabeth. Another question? We're doing great, guys. Let me see how many. Oh, we have 15. Perfect. OK. Now. Here. What happens if I'm doing something? Let's see. I select the paragraph. And something happened. My information is erased, is delete, is move. I don't know what happened. Something is not right. Instead of looking what happened, you need to click in this one. Did you see like a left turn? Like like a you turn to the left. This is undo. Undo cancel what you did before. Undo is not for mistakes. Undo is gonna cancel what you did before. So if for any reason this is undo, this is redo. There is a mistake. You try to copy and the text is gone. The text move. Something is not right. Right away, click undo. But if you notice the mistake after 30 minutes, undo is not a good option to use. Because undo is going to cancel what you've been doing in your resume, in your resume or in your document. And the shortcut for undo is Control Z. If for redo is Control Y. If I go to WordPad, let's see, I'm selecting this one, I press the mouse and then I move. Do you see I move everything? So what happened? I don't know. Control Z, undo. Undo, cancel what I did. If I go to Google Docs, I'm going to try to do the same. I move, Control Z, is working. Also, undo is here and redo is here and Google Docs. You go to WordPad. 
undo and redo. Questions, comments? Okay. See? No. Now, in order to save your document, in this case, let's see where you're saving your resume. You need to save your resume in three different formats. As a Word document. As a 97, 2003 document and also as a PDF. When I say number one Word document, it's a Word processor. It can be Word Pack, it can be Google Docs. It's the program that you're using in order to create your document. When you save your, doc, your resume as a 97, 2003, you're making your resume compatible with any Microsoft Word versions. Let's see, I'm using the latest version of Microsoft Word, okay? 2019, and there is a company who asked me for my resume, and that company using Microsoft Word 2003. If I send my resume with the latest version, they won't be able to open my resume because they are not compatible. So you need to say your, your resume as a 97, 2003. And also there is some companies that require only PDF documents, government agency, um, Chicago uh, City College of Chicago, they require PDF for security reasons. PDF document you cannot modify. Okay, so I'm going to explain the different ways to save your resume in Microsoft Word or the same with your document. In order to save your document or your resume, you need to go here where it says File and select Save As. Okay. You're going to see here, Save As. Now we're going to select the word Browse. This is the main screen of saving a document. On the left side, you need to select Where. This is the location is going to be save your document. The file name is the name of your document. By the way, if you are do, uh, doing your resume, you should put your last name, your first name, and the word resume. So my last name. First name and the word resume. If for any reason you have more than one resume, switch your first name, last name, the word resume, and then you have another one, put resume, last name, first name, or resume, first name, last name. Do you see here where it says Word document? When I save it like a Word document, it's because it's gonna save it on the version of Microsoft Word I'm using. If I want to make my resume compatible with any Microsoft Word versions, I need to click here where it says Save as Site, and then I need to set this one, 97 2003 document. When I used to apply for a job, I always send my resume as a 97 2003 because everybody think all the companies are using the latest version of Microsoft Word. And now that is a myth. I know companies that are using 97 or 2003. They don't have the budget to update software. So you want to be sure that the resume you send it is going to be compatible with the Microsoft or the Word document or the Microsoft Office they are using, save as a 97 2003 document. Thank the you. I have a question. Yes. 
Uh, so is it uh, safe to send it Word 97-2003 document better than PDF? Yeah, you need to be careful. When you apply for a job, you need to see if the companies require a specific type of resume. Sometimes when you apply for a job, let me show you. In here, I'm going to go to Indeed. And this part, when it says choose a file, there is some companies where they put next to here, they put only PDF documents. Or sometimes they're going to put something like this. Oh, let me cancel this one. They're going to put something like this, PDF or DOC or the latest version of Microsoft is DOCX. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you need to be careful. When you don't see anything like, a, okay, I need to send like this. I always send it as a 97, 2003. I'm playing safe. Okay. Because I know. It doesn't matter what version of Microsoft or the company using, they're going to be able to access, open my resume. Okay, but, I have a question here. Uh, if they, they won't make any changes to our resume, correct? For legal reason, no. Okay. Yeah, no, no. That is, that's why when you have a job interview, you go with copies on your resume, at least four or five copies in your resume. So you can see it if they modify and by law they cannot modify, make changes. Okay. okay. Be, be careful with the PDF. Not all the companies are able to open PDF documents. And then also some applicant tracking system, they don't work so good with PDF documents. Okay, I have one more question. Suppose if I save the file in 97, 2003, and then if I want to save it on my desktop, do I have to change it in the Word file if I want to make any edit? No. No. I can make the changes in that document, which is nice. That's correct. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just in case, is there. Um, What's that sound? Here, you know, it's not me. There is somebody with, um, with a microphone on. If you don't mind to mute your microphone, please. Thank you. Uh, in here, select 97 2003, and you can use that one and always save as a 97 2003. And this one, when you say PDF, did you see from here? You can save a PDF. A lot of my students say, How can I save as a PDF? Where I can save it? When you save as a PDF and you click and save, Adobe Reader is going to open your document. Do you see Adobe Reader? This is, let's see, your resume. If I select, I cannot delete it. I cannot make it changes. Correct. That's yeah, the beauty yeah. of a PDF document. Correct. Okay, but be careful. Not all companies work so well with PDF resumes. Okay, unless it's asked for it, you should not send a PDF. If they don't ask, don't send it. Play safe. 97, 2003. Okay. okay. Yes. And don't forget to save in your email account. Send it to yourself an email and attach these three documents because sometimes we can go to uh, a specific office and there is a higher end event. And we can have access to a computer lab. We can download our resume and apply. So this is the best way to save your your resume is in your email. Yeah, one account. moment. Let me just make a note of that another 9 11 had been averted. Thousands of lives had been saved. What is that? These were concerned that knowledge of how to build these liquid bombs. Are you meaning to do that? Spread through the Al Qaeda network. Say that again? Are you, I hear, I hear. 
Are you meaning to play that music or whatever's playing? Um, I, I didn't hear your question, sorry, because somebody was on the microphone. Say oh, it again. That's, that's, I was asking, what was that sound? I think you, oh. someone was. Yes, yeah, somebody was talking and their microphone was on, so. Do you remember to mute your microphone, uh, your microphone, please? And just in case you have a question, unmute, please. Okay. So here. So remember to save your document in three different ways. To, this is the best way. Any questions? What we have covered so far? Okay, I'm going to here. Question. Have, yes. Uh, if you if you want to send an attachment. To your covering note, you know that you have three attachment, maybe certificates. You want to make it in one folder and mm -hmm. send it as an attachment. Um, how do we do it? How do you send your? You mean how you send your resume into your email as an attachment? No, I have three different folders, mm -hmm. three different documents, and I want to put them together in one folder and send it to someone. You want to send the folder. OK, um, if you want to send me the questions by email so we okay. can work together. OK, so, got it. so yes, I can work with you. OK, great. OK. Uh, is, is there another question? No. OK. So, review. In order to make changes to your document, we need to select the text. Teacher, what is select the text? Highlight the text. We can use the mouse using three clicks to select one paragraph, one, two, three. You want to select one word, double click. You want to select one line, move the mouse pointer to the left side, one click, dragging. You don't like the mouse like me. By the way, I really hate the mouse. My students know that I really hate the mouse. Um, we can use shift in order to select text. And this is a beauty, OK? You know how to select the text without the mouse. Believe me, when you apply for a job, you're going to get the job. How do you select without the mouse? The tricky thing is move the mouse pointer, hold, the shift key, and you can use the navigation keys, right, down, the end key, and you select. You press control, what was the shortcuts? Control A to select all. This is the shortcuts. You want to make a bold, italic, underline. Everything that you can see here, you can use in WordPad and also you can use in Google Docs. Okay, if for any reason I said I wasn't able to download Microsoft Word, don't worry about it. You can use WordPad if you're using a Windows PC. You don't have Windows PC, but you have a Gmail account, you can access your Google Docs and it's free. Okay, and that's the beauty of a Google Docs. The menu looks a little bit different, but you can see we have the tabs, file, edit, and the shortcuts from here. The font, the font size, make a bold, italic, underline, and the alignment. You're doing your resume. You remember the fonts that you can use in your resume? One is Arial, only one font, but in your resume, you can use Georgia. You can use Tahoma, or you can use Baydena. Sorry. You can use in here. Baydena, Baydena. That's the font that works well with the ATS. Okay. Also on the ATS, in your resume, don't use lines. The applicant tracking system cannot read text below the lines. 
your contact information, don't type it on the header like this one. This is on the header. You type something on the header because you want to see the same thing on the next page, on the next page. Applicant tracking system cannot read information that is typed on the headers. Okay. Questions, comments? I'm going to put here just in case you want to make any questions. Uh, did you learn something today? Yes. Yes, we did. Good. So yes. remember, if you have any questions, a specific question you want me to work with you with your resume, if you have to receive job opportunities, and send me an email, and I can make an appointment. We can connect using this one or by phone, and I can. I'm more happy to help you in this in this case. Um, you're gonna receive later after 3 p.m. another email invitation for the next three webinars of Microsoft Word. Uh, remember, for tomorrow we're gonna cover and how to insert tables in Microsoft Word, and we use tables in order to organize the information by columns and by rows. And on the third class, we're gonna cover online pictures. We used to call clip arts shapes in order to make a, a flyer. The four class is so good, like all the classes, but in the four class, this is something all the companies are using, mailings. Okay, we're going to learn how to do labels, envelopes and documents. We're going to combine Microsoft Excel with Microsoft Word in order to create labels, envelopes, and documents. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm not sure how many sign in for the Microsoft Excel class for today. Um, today we're going to start at 11. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and question, guys, before we finish the. Yeah, the webinar. I'm trying. I'm trying to type a message to you. Um, how do why is it not letting me um, type a message to you? Okay, do you see this icon that I'm moving the mouse? Uh huh. And then on the lower right corner in here, mm -hmm. just type whatever you want to the questions. Oh, I had the icon block. I see. Let me see. Oh, well, let me do it now. Um, if for any reason you don't get the quick reference, this one, let me know. I can send it to you again. I love the shortcuts. My students know this teacher hate the mouse. I have a mouse issues. <laughs> but I think knowing how to do with the keyword is so great. So you have two options, using the mouse and without the mouse. So feel free to send me an email, please. Let me see how many participants. Oh, 17. That's great. Let me see. OK, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, who is taking Microsoft Excel class? Uh, me. Okay. Me. If you're, if you're taking Microsoft Excel class, um, see you at uh, 11. If for any reason you don't uh, get the invitation for Excel, send me right now an email. I have a lot of emails I need to answer. Uh, reply, sorry. And let me know, please. Okay. And, okay, go ahead. And be safe. You know, I wish you the best. Uh, keep in contact and thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank okay, you. I have, I have a question, thank sir. You. Close.